Howdy folks, this is Singing Toad, and today I have another uh, talk about a knife. I don't exactly know if I want to call it a review, because I don't really consider myself a reviewer. Um, so uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, what do we have here? We have my folding filleting knife. Um, so this is kind of an oddball knife. Uh, this was a gift given to me uh, to, from my sister uh, for a birthday uh, a few years ago now. And, uh, I'm into fishing and she knows that. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, or at least I think I've mentioned, um, I've not really received many knives as gifts over the years. Um, I can probably count on maybe one hand how many knives I've actually received as gifts. And I'm a big knife collector. I get lots of fishing gear. Um, and I guess this kind of, kind of fits in both categories. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really haven't received many knives as gifts over the years. Uh, and my sister was, uh, one of the very few people who give me a knife for a gift, uh, which also happens to be a fishing accessory. So it kind of hits, uh, hits on both uh, ends there. Um, so anyway, I just want to talk about this because it's, it's kind of a, an interesting thing. Um, so it is a folding filleting knife. Um, so I'm not sure how well you can see that, but you can see how thin that blade is. It's got a thumb stud. It has uh, rosewood handles. I believe that's rosewood. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up here. Now, I'm not sure if this will fit all in frame. No, it won't even fit in frame. Look at that, eh? <laughs> it's, can I do it this way? Whoa. Nope. How about that? Can I get this in all in the frame here? Wow. <laughs> it's so big, it doesn't even fit in the frame. Um, so, it says here, Gone Fishing with Air Crafters and it is a timber line and that's basically it uh, I don't see any other markings uh, anywhere else on it um, when I tried doing some research on this uh, knife here I wasn't really able to find much information about it um, I'm fairly certain it is a Chinese made knife I have no idea what the blade steel is it's some type of stainless steel um, some of the Research I found said that, you know, it's rosewood handles with brass pins. It does have Torx construction for the for the pivot, which is nice. So for us knife guys, you know, adjusting your pivot screw is nice. It is a liner lock, as you can see here. And it does have a thumb stud. So it makes for easy one-handed deployment. So when you're on the riverbank and you've caught that, uh, you know, you've brought that nice uh, brook trout in and it's time to fillet it. You can pull this thing out with, uh, with with one hand and deploy the blade and get to work on flying the fish right on the side of the river if, if, if you should want to prepare your shore lunch. It's got a lanyard hole, should you want to carry a lanyard. I don't because I keep this in my pack. Um, I don't carry it on a lanyard, but uh, anyway, it's just really kind of neat. And I just want to take a minute here and talk about it. Um, I don't, again, I don't really know much about it because this company doesn't really seem to exist anymore. Um, if you do go on Amazon, you can find other folding fillet knives like it. Um, not necessarily under the Timberline name, but uh, they range in price from around 40 Canadian dollars to 50 Canadian dollars. They're not terribly expensive. Um, so if you're an avid fisherman uh, and carrying a filleting knife on you in your kit is something you're going to have, and space and weight is an issue, well, look into getting a folding one like this. Uh, it is sturdily built. It does have steel liners on the inside, solid wood handle. It's got a very good lockup. I mean, there's a little bit of blade play, just a little bit, but that could be easily adjusted by just tightening down this pivot screw. Um, you know, this isn't the kind of knife you're carrying in your pocket as an EDC knife. <laughs> so the flicky action, you know, the, the, uh, the fidget factor of it doesn't really matter so much. It's, it's, it's purposely built for a, a flying fish. It's not really your EDC knife. So if it's a little stiff action, it doesn't matter. Or if it's a little floppy action, again, it doesn't matter. As long as it's got a solid lockup, which it does, you know, it's not going to accidentally fold shut on you while you're trying to flay your fish on the, uh, uh, before it goes in the frying pan. Uh, so I guess we should uh, do some measurements here. Let's grab a tape measure real quick. And I'll start with the overall measurement. Now, I don't know if you can see this on camera because it barely fits in this in this frame here. So, what is that? That's, um, hold on a second here. I'm gonna have to, it's a, 
roughly 12 and three quarters of an inch. I know that's off frame, um, but that's what it is. And the length of the blade is about five and three quarters of an inch. So for those of us in the metric camp, you're talking, what's that? Oh boy, don't move around. Get that right on the tip there. So almost 15 centimeters, maybe a little bit less than 15 centimeters. And again, the overall length, again, this, this is just going to want to move around here. So I'm saying 33 and a half centimeters is the overall length in the metric. Uh, it's a flying knife, so it's got a very thin blade. You know, we're talking three quarter, quarters of an inch thick, so about two centimeters thick, or wide, I should say, and then it tapers way down. The blade stock is really, really thin. I mean, we're talking like a sixteenth of an inch, or less than two mils. It's very, very thin because it's meant, it's a thin slicey blade. It's meant for working a, 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 along the, the uh, backspine of a, of a fish and feeling along those bones. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a thin, thin blade and it's very, very flexible. That's how a flaying knife works. Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar, familiar with flaying knives or also known as a boning knife, uh, you know, these are very good for going around bones, uh, while you fillet a fish. Um, so for some quick size comparisons, and again, this isn't going to want to stay in, in, in focus here or in frame. I'm trying to do my best here for you folks keep it in frame. I need to come up with a higher tripod thingy. Um, so obviously we'll compare it against another flying knife. Now this is my regular flying knife and you can see it's all dirty and gross because this goes on the river with me. Um, <laughs> look at this thing. It's just so dirty. Um, uh, you know, I use my knives. Okay. Like, you know, I make no bones about it. So this is a Rapala and, uh, you can see even though the blade Actually, the rappel is a little bit longer than the blade, to tell you the truth. But the handle, you can see, you know, the handle here, significantly different. All right. So this is like your more traditional uh, flying knife. And boy, I need to sharpen that. That's fairly dull. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring in a Groman Canadian belt knife. And I brought this one over because this, has, this does have rosewood handles with brass pins. And I know that for a fact because that's what it says right on Groman's website. Um, and you can see that it looks about the same. So this is, I think this is some type of rosewood, not hundred percent sure. Uh, what do we got here? We have a CRKT Pilar or Pilar or Pilar. I'm not sure how you pronounce this thing. All right. So that's a kind of a dinky little tiny knife. And I think more people are familiar with probably the Spyderco PM2. Let's, uh, let's get that more in a frame here. All right, for size comparison again. And uh, one last size comparison, a standard Bic lighter. You know, works nicely. Can't go wrong with a Bic lighter. All right, so there you go. There's your size comparisons. <laughs> okay, enough goofing around. Um, so what other lies can I tell you about this thing? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's neat. It's solid. Like it's got this solid metal part back here. I mean, it feels good in the hand. Um, I mean, you can almost get two hands on the thing. The ergos are really nice. You know, whether you hold it way back here or you choke up on it here or put your thumb up there. Um, I mean, I, I like it, you know, and, and it, it's again, it's solid, you know, and that thumb stud is out of the way of the cutting path. So when you're filleting a fish, you know, you're working along there with your, with your knife. Um, that's not going to get in the way. And I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think that's removable. I think you could actually take that off if you had to. Um, I wouldn't, but you know, so yeah, I mean, it, obviously because it's, um, because it's got this real wood handle and, and the full, uh, stainless steel liners and this, this back, uh, spacer piece in the back here, it's heavy. Okay. Like it's, it's much, much more heavy than, uh, than a, a regular, 
uh, filleting knife, okay? Um, but, boy, I tell you, it, it's quality made. Um, you know, if, if I saw this in a store and it was 40 bucks, I, I would I would buy it. I wouldn't think anything bad about it. So, um, like I said, uh, this is a, what they call a timber line. That's what that says right there on the, on, the, on the stamp, on the tang there. Um, best I can tell, it's a Chinese made knife. It's quality made. Um, I would say if you can find one of these and this is something you're interested in, go ahead and buy it. Um, you know, what else can I tell you about it? Well, I guess that's about it. All right, well, there we go. So there is my uh, uh, folding filleting uh, knife. Uh, and uh, thanks very much for watching, folks. Singing Toad, signing out.